All right, my friends, time for another fantastic Revit tip. All right, this came up yesterday, just yesterday. A client said they needed a, well, they, they had a ramp, okay? They had a ramp that was going up. It was a handicap accessible ramp. And they had a railing on the edge of that ramp, but the requirement was that they had a curb, like a concrete curb under that railing for like the visually impaired. If they've got their, um, like if a blind person is walking along and they've got one of those guidance sticks that it wouldn't get tripped up on the edge, it would have a curb to hit against, okay? So um, I came up with this really fun solution and I wanna share it with you guys. The, um, and so, well, without any further ado, let's just hop into Revit and I'll, I'll show you where my brain went trying to come up with a curb on the edge of a ramp. All right, so here we go. Let me share my screen with you. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. All right, I think you can see my screen. And I got my face out of the way over here. It's quite small because I think my resolution is a, um, there we go. Oh, ho, oh, look at that. You can make that bigger. Oh, oh. Okay. So here we go. Let's just, we've got a ramp and I hope you guys can see this. We've got a ramp here in Revit. And one of the things that we were dealing with was um, we can put a, um, we can put a railing on this. Let me just put a railing on. And here's a quick way to do a railing. If you have a ramp, you can click on the railing tool. Okay. And it says right here, instead of sketching a rail, you can go to this tool, place on a stair or a ramp, which is great. So you click on that guy right there. And then it wants to know where the stair or the ramp is. But you have to decide what kind of a rail you want. So here's a, um, a guard rail, a pipe guard rail. And if I click, boom, they appear, okay? But, uh -huh, no way, that, it worked. <laughs> Love it when a plan comes together, okay. So let's get rid of this front one here just so we can see what we're doing. We've got a railing here and let's just say I click on this railing and I wanna switch it from a guard rail to a, da, 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 like a handrail, plain old handrail, okay? Or a plain old guard rail, guard rail rectangular, okay? So what we've got here is a guard rail, but it doesn't have the curb underneath it, okay? That was the requirement. And so there are ways to put a curb on the edge of this. You can't host a, um, like a slab edge, that won't work. And you can't host um, a slab edge. <laughs> I, I tried making a slab edge and hosting it to there and it just, it won't do it. Okay. Cause it won't attach itself to a curb. I mean, to a ramp. So I thought, well, maybe a great idea would be to make a sweep, but yes, you could make a sweep, follow this edge, but then the um, you're building extra objects in there that you have to deal with because then you've got the ramp and then you've got the sweep and then you've got a railing. And I thought, Wait a second. What if you built a railing that was the curb? Okay. So here we go. I'm going to show you what I was talking about. So here we go. I'm going to go to file and I'm going to go to new family. And this, that the fun part here is, let me move my face over there. The fun part is this. Mm-hmm. The template we're going to use is a profile of a rail. Okay, I'm going to hit OK. And when it pops open, this is typically used for designing the top rail or a hand rail, not a curb. So it gives you the center line so that you can draw your profile. And it gives you the top of the rail line here so you can control the height of it. So when you type in the height of the thing, the top of it will go to that height. That makes sense. Like a, if you've got a guardrail, it needs to be three foot six, okay? And a handrail, three foot. The top would go there. But we're making a curb. So I'm going to use that line as the bottom of it and just leave my profile at zero. So watch this. I'm going to draw a line, OK? 
okay? And let's just say my curb is four inches tall by three inches, bam. Just a nice little thing, but I, I wanna ease this edge. So I have not used uh, the center of this. I'm putting it right there. If you guys see what I'm doing here, okay? And I am now going to use this tool to put a little fillet on the top of that, a one inch eased edge on that. That's all I gotta do. And I'm going to load that into my project, load to my project and close it. Do I wanna save it? Yeah. And I'm going to call it uh, um, profile uh, ramp curb, okay, save. It's a profile of a ramp curb for lack of a better name, okay? And I've loaded it into my project. So now let's go back to 3D. Okay, look at this. If I want a railing, so I'm gonna click on this railing, okay? And I'm gonna make a curb, a railing, a curb out of the railing. So I'm just gonna take that and I'm gonna say, instead of rectangular guard rail, I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna say, okay, here we go. I want to duplicate up at the top. You click duplicate. And this is going to be a curb or ramp. Okay. I'm going to say, okay. All right. Now I got to edit this thing. So my railing structure, I'm going to go to my railing structure and I don't need a bottom rail. And uh, let me hit delete. Okay. You sure you want to delete? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to delete it. Yes. And I'm going to delete that one. This last one that's available here. I'm gonna call curb, okay? The height's gonna be zero, and I don't need an offset either. And the profile I'm going to use is profile ramp curb. And I can even make the material um, concrete. So let's do that. Cast in place concrete. Okay, so once you get it set up and you say, okay, wait for it, wait. Top reference, below the bottom reference, balusters. Okay, we're gonna have a problem with the balusters because I forgot to get rid of the balusters. But let me just go back. Well, what happened? Look at this. We've got a curb now that follows that edge. I'm gonna go back and, and address the baluster um, error that we just had. Edit type and get my face out of the way. The balusters were using that, okay? I don't need balusters. I'm gonna set that to none, okay? And I don't need a start post. Uh, I'm going to set it to none. I don't need a corner post. I'm going to set that to none. And I'm going to get an end post. I'm going to set that to none. If I had set those earlier, then we wouldn't have had that error pop up that said, you got a problem, dude. Okay. So I'm just going to say, okay, now. So that clears up the, the issues. So what we've got here is I turned that guardrail into a curb. But let's say we didn't have that. Watch. Boop, gone. If I need curbs on both sides, I can go to railing, place on a stair, okay? I wanna click it, but I'm gonna change the type. Change the type to a, wait for it, what do we call it? Um, da, 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 I gotta find it. Curb for ramp, okay? And then when I click the stair, boom. We get curbs down both sides just instantly, okay? And incidentally, that is a quick way to get railings onto stairs. If you've deleted them, you can get them back just by using that tool. Okay, this is not quite what we want, but this may help you in one of your designs. What we've got here are a curb. We got curbs. See how it's following that profile edge, that profile, that eased edge? But that's not exactly what we wanted. What we want was a railing that is in place that has a curb under it, okay? So wait for it. I'm gonna click on this far one here and I'm gonna switch it back into a mm -hmm, pipe rail, guardrail rectangular, okay? Bam. So we've got a guardrail rectangular. You guys hear me? All right. And so what I'm gonna do is edit the type and I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna call this a guardrail rectangular with a curb, with curb, crub, curb. How do you spell curb? Okay, there it is, rectangular with curb, okay? But I don't have a curb. So here, what I'm, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna to go to my railing and I'm gonna add 
I've got a bottom railing. I'm going to raise that up four inches because it's going to interfere with the curb. So I'm going to lift it up to like 10 inches. So it's above the curb. I'm going to insert and move it to the bottom down. And I'm going to call that curb. You guys following me? I'm putting a curb at zero, zero offset, not the default profile. I'm going to use our profile of the curb. And again, I could make it into concrete. Wait for it. Cast in place concrete. Okay. So here's what it looks like when I do, when I say, okay, wait for it. Okay. Okay. Again. Oh, what? Okay. So now we've got a guardrail in here with a curb under it, but the posts, if it's relevant, the posts are driving through the uh, curb. You can fix that if you want them to stop on top. It's kind of cool that they're embedded in because that's probably how they're going to make it. But if you wanted to lift them up, you could. You can click on that and you could go to edit type and you could say, okay, um, the baluster placement here button. What we've got is the, um, the, the balusters are going down to the bottom rail. Um, I mean, they're going all the way to the host. Look at this. The start post and the corner post and the end post are all going down to the base. If you wanted, you could lift those up to the curb. You kick them to the curb right there. And when you say, okay, it lifts them up so that they're not driving down through, even though that's probably how they would build it. But anyway, this, it worked, okay? What it is, is a curb that's built into the railing. And this can really help you guys if that is a requirement that you guys need. You can make a railing curb and place it wherever you need, where it'll attach to stairs. Um, sometimes you need something underneath that. You don't have to use the stringers. You can use these, but the the reason I designed this was for a specific need, and I hope this helps somebody out there. That so you can actually put a curb, a concrete curb, as part of your railing structure at the bottom. Anyway, all right, I'll stop sharing. Get back to you guys. I hope this helps someone out there. It came up yesterday, and I thought I would share it with you all. It's a fantastic Reddit tip. Only if it makes sense in your project. So, all right. If you guys have any great ideas, suggestions, put them in the comments below. And otherwise, then uh, just wait for another fantastic Revit tip coming up. All right. You guys have a great day. And until then, happy Reviting. All right. Bye-bye.